Hello and welcome to News Click. For 35 years, Abdul Jabbar fought for thousands of victims of the world's worst ever industrial disaster, the Bhopal gas tragedy. He died on 14 November 2019, two years ago, of illnesses that he contracted during the chemical leak, which took place two kilometers from his house. For the last 37 years, the gas leak at the Union Carbide plant has claimed at least 20,000 lives and left over 5 lakh people disabled. Last year, the BJP government conferred on Abdul Jabbar, known to people who knew him as Jabbar Bhai, the Padma Award. We have with us N.D. Jayaprakash from the Delhi Science Forum to discuss the legacy of Abdul Jabbar and who can rightly claim it. Welcome to the show. Um, so can you tell us what is uh, Abdul Jabbar's legacy? His entire family was exposed to the disaster, his parents, his uh, brothers and sister. Uh, <clears throat> so immediately after the disaster, he got uh, started uh, helping other victims right. you know, I mean, who, who were exposed to toxic gases. In the process, he uh, got in touch with other actors who came to Bhopal immediately after the disaster. So in the process, he uh, became an activist in, uh, as a victim and, and, and also as an activist in taking up the cause of the Bhopal victims. Because one of the first requirements was medical aid and uh, food and other uh, materials. So, uh, in the process, he, he started uh, this, uh, f a group called Zereli Gaskar Mocha was formed and he was right. part of it. Uh, so, that is how he got involved. You know? And in, uh, uh, but one year after the disaster, uh, well, there were a lot of differences within the organization also. So he, he formed his own organization. Um, was uh, many women who were provided uh, <coughs> working in stitching centers, you know. Right. That was closed down after one year of the disaster, and so these women uh, protested against the closure of these uh, stitching centers. So he helped these women to form an association called the Bhopal Gas Pedas Maila Udyog Sangatan. This was in 1986. And since then, he's been actively fighting for the uh, Bhopal Gas Pedas. And he also fought a legal uh, battle. Yeah, right. because one of the first uh, issues was um, um, help, help for the needy, needy victims. So he filed a petition in the Supreme Court, and through su su the Supreme Court, um, uh, um, food aid was provided to gas victims. More than one lakh families, you know, they were given free food uh, because of his intervention. That was one of the steps. And, uh, and and because this uh, petition was then and and, and uh, 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 after uh, because of the consistent struggle, these uh, the stitching centers were reopened after one year, okay. and, you know, because of this struggle. So that is one. Of, so. Uh, he thought that it, it, it's just not uh, the issue is not confined to these women, because the whole of other victims who were not getting any kind of help from the government. So he took up he, through his, his organization. He took up the cause of all gas victims. Okay. You see, so that is how he, he and he was full, uh, fully uh, spending all his time because earlier he was. Uh, I mean, he had finished his uh, ITI. And um, he used to work as a small uh, contractor in um, right. that was his, so he gave up and he started full time work uh, with the victims. Dedicated yeah. himself yeah, completely. Yeah, completely. Yeah. Okay. So um, why do you think last year became the time when he was conferred the award, uh, which were 
you know, given out now because mm. of COVID, one couldn't uh, confer the awards. Uh, what do you think uh, prompted the government to think of Abdul Jabbar now? Because <clears throat> his death in uh, on 19, um, 14 November 2019 right. uh, was a big setback. Because uh, as an activist, because you see, one of the petitions before the High Court mm -hmm. was to provide proper medical treatment to gas victims. Right. And this petition was filed in 1998. Okay. And in 2012, the Supreme Court uh, <clears throat> directed the Union of India and the state government to provide proper medical treatment to gas victims. And the Supreme Court transferred this petition to the High Court. And that matter is pending in, for the High Court for the last nine years. Okay. Because in 2012, the matter was transferred there. Right. Uh, um, and from time to time, the High Court has been issuing very good orders, orders but uh, unfortunately, the, the central government has not been complying with those directions. That and, is one. Uh, and this, this, while this matter was pending before the High Court, he died because of lack of proper medical care. Because uh, uh, he himself was a victim and he was suffering from various... Uh, <clears throat> I mean, he had a breathing problem and he was a diabetic patient oh. and he had problems with the eyes. And uh, when uh, he was admitted to the uh, Bhopal Medical, uh, BMHRC Bhopal, uh, that hospital didn't have the facilities to treat him properly. So he was transferred to a private mm -hmm. uh, hospital and he was to be taken to um, uh, M Mumbai for better treatment. But in the process, while he was in the private hospital in, in Bhopal, he, he passed away because of lack of problem. And this became an issue and, you know, and uh, <clears throat> the government had to, uh, it was uh, immediately after his death, he was uh, awarded the <clears throat> Pardon. State government, uh, no, uh, uh, because at that time the, the state government awarded him a separate uh, right. award for his uh, services to society, uh, society. And then there was change of government. So the new government uh, came. They also recognized his contribution, that, you know, and they decided to award him with Padma Sri. So considering because he, at that time he was in the news, you know, because of his death. And, that's right. You know. And uh, considering the role of the various governments that have come to power and gone in the last 37 years or so, uh, do you think this award given by the government is somewhere purely symbolic? Yeah. <clears throat> Yes, definitely it's symbolic, but it, it should be. I mean, I mean, I hope that the government recognizes that this was a major tragedy and there's more, more needs to be done. And hopefully uh, we are in uh, touch with the government and we are, uh, because this medical petition, the, the High Court has passed stringent orders and stringent direction to the state government and the central government. Right. And hopefully uh, they will comply with the directions. Uh, could and you take uh, us through what the directions are, what they could No, because see, uh, after we filed this petition in 1998, mm -hmm. the Supreme Court directed the uh, central government to build a separate 500-bed hospital in Bhopal. So finally, in the year 2000, uh, a, a hospital with, with 350-bedded super-speciality hospital was built in Bhopal. In 2000, this hospital was the best hospital in the whole of Central India. And uh, unfortunately, uh, because it was the best hospital, there was a lot of pressure to provide services to non-gas victims also. Uh, but over a period of time, the non-gas victims got priority in treatment in the gas relief hospital. And became, I mean, it became a scandal in the sense, you know, we, we protested against this. <laughs> I mean, you create a separate hospital for the gas victims and non-gas victims gets, gets priority in treatment. You know? 
So because of our pressure, we again went to the Supreme Court. And because of our pressure, the, the, because it was run by a trust uh, from 2000 onwards. So the trustee resigned in 2010. And the Supreme Court directed the central government to take over the hospital in 2010. But what happened was after 2010, uh, many of the uh, uh, specialists, the uh, consultants and uh, specialists left the hospitals uh, because a number of other private hospitals came up in, in Bhopal at that time. And they were paying them uh, uh, higher high salaries. Right. And, so just, and also, uh, although we demanded that uh, uh, Bhopal Medical uh, BMHRC be converted to a teaching hospital mm -hmm. so that uh, the the best uh, professionals remain in there and you know and provide the best treatment to the gastric. Because in the 1991 order, right, uh, there was specific direction to central government and the state government to provide the best treatment to the gas victims. See? That's right. Uh, so, uh, tragically, after 2010, after these uh, specialists started leaving these hospitals, the, the quality of treatment in uh, BMHRC started to uh, deteriorate. And in 2010, the central government set up uh, another unit of All India Institute of Medical Sciences in Bhopal. So, at that time, we said that when you, when you, when you decided to set up AIMS, BMHRC should be converted to AIMS, you know, instead of setting a separate uh, uh, infrastructure in Bhopal. But uh, the central government did not consent to it. So many of the doctors who left BMHRC actually went and joined AIMS Bhopal. See? Because that's a teaching hospital plus the facilities are far better. So one of the uh, demands has been that at least uh, the BMHRC must be run at least on par with uh, the, the facilities at BMHRC. It should be at par with what is there in, in Ames, Bhopal. All right. So th at present, non-gas victims in Bhopal have far be better facilities in Ames, Bhopal than gas victims who <laughs> in, in BMHRC. Right. Uh, this is the contradiction. So the matter is coming up for this High Court again on 30th November, and hopefully the central government and the state government will comply with the directions to improve the infrastructure in, in uh, BMHRC so that uh, pr the best treatment available in Bhopal should be provided to the gas victims. You know. Can you give an idea of how many people actually need uh, the medical care at see, the BMHRC? Oh, see, there are nearly 5 lakh gas victims who are re registered uh, uh, at BMHRC. You know, see, this, this has been one of the, another problem because we have been demanding that proper medical records be kept of all the gas victims. So there was direction to computerize the medical records of BMHRC plus other hospitals the state, the number of uh, hospitals run by the state government also for gas victims. Okay. So that, you know, <clears throat> all the, uh, this proper medical records of all the victims who are going for treatment. And one of the information we have got is at least 150,000 gas victims are regularly visiting these hospitals. That means at least 150,000 are permanently injured, you know. Right. But according to official records, less than 4,000 victims are, are permanently injured. That's a contradiction. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. There were demands to update ah. this number. But for despite a long our time. demand, despite the Supreme Court demand to computerize the medical records, mm -hmm. uh, the records kept by BMHRC is not compatible with the records kept by the state government. Okay. And, and and because of this, the National Informatics Center was directed to mm -hmm. uh, ensure that the data of BMHRC and other gas relief hospitals should be 
uh, made compatible. Right. So NIC has not complied with those directions for the. I mean, the NIC is made a respondent in the case in 2013 by the Supreme Court order. Okay. But last eight years, they have not done anything to make the records compatible. But from available records, it's evident that more than 150,000 victims are permanently injured. And in, in Bhopal? In Bhopal, in Bhopal, right. you see. And most of them, I mean, uh, uh, are not being treated properly you know, because there is no monitoring, proper monitoring of their health status. Because there has been a consistent complaint uh, from the victims that uh, very often their symptoms are treated and that the illnesses they suffer from get ignored. Um, because, see, see, what happens is one day a victim goes to one health center, mm -hmm. see, it takes medicine from there. Okay. And next day the same victim goes to another medical center and takes more, or, and the doctors, and the, they, they do not have access to the victim's medical records. They do not know what medicines, what are the symptoms. Or. So every time the victim goes to hospital, it's treated as a new case. You see? Okay. So there's over medication at one, you know. All right. And it's, it's, it's not based, it's all symptomatic treatment, you know. You see? Mm -hmm. I mean, this has been, uh, and because of this, there's been a number of cases of renal failure. You know? All right. And there were also cases of spurious drugs. Right. See? All these matters have been taken up uh, with the state government, you know, time and again. But uh, these issues have not been resolved. Okay. So, um, what is supposed to happen in the November hearing? Is it just a status update? No, no, because the uh, <clears throat> number of vacancies in BMS has not been filled. You know? So okay. the court has directed that those vacancies be filled by then. You know? All right. And also uh, the status of uh, um, uh, medical equipment and uh, medicines, lack of medicine, that these issues have to be addressed. All right. Hmm. So, the entire Bhopal tragedy cases have uh, been proceeding on three tracks. The other two tracks are the compensation and the renewal uh, of the land. Um, you remediation. Know, the remediation. So, what, what is the status of these other two uh, cases, also part of uh, what Abdul Jabbar was uh, fighting for? The, uh, right from, you know, uh, one of the contentions in 1918, uh, that time of the settlement, we said that, you know, the settlement amount mm -hmm. was 470 million. Right. Uh, was not based on any concrete figure of dead and injured. Right. And after we filed our review pet writ petitions, the Supreme Court came out with figures saying that uh, the compensation was based on the assumption that 3,000 people had died and 1,2,000 were injured. But then they said, how did you get these figures? What is the basis of, uh, you know? Because uh, after the disaster, nearly 6 lakh claims had been filed. So at the time of the settlement, less than 10,000 claims had been categorized. You know? Okay. Mm -hmm. So there was no basis for the Supreme Court or the government to come to this, <laughs> quantify this figure of 3,000 dead and one lakh, they were totally hypothetical uh, figures. So it took 12 years to uh, go through all the claims. And you know, uh, there were four, 40 claim courts were set up after 1991. I mean, uh, after 1991, 40, over 40 claim courts were set up. And it took 12 years to process all the claims. You know. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, after processing all the claims, the court, the claim courts came to the conclusion that 5,73,000 people had been injured. Right. Know, had suffered various degrees of injury. 
so that was the, so we said then we said that now that the courts the claim courts themselves have come to the conclusion that the magnitude was five times greater than the assumption mm -hmm. of 1989 they should increase the compensation at least by five times right so we filed this petition in 2004 but uh, at that time the supreme court dismissed it no in, in the sense we said, they said we have to go back to the welfare commissioner uh, because on on the uh, on, uh, regarding quantification of the magnitude of dead and injured we went back to the welfare commissioners uh, welfare commission also dismissed the case we went to the high court high court dismissed the case came back to the supreme court then supreme court again admitted the case in 2010 no and after the supreme court admitted our petition for uh, reviewing the magnitude of dead and injured the union of india filed a petition curative petition right. challenging the settlement of 1989 and with lower figures by 10 the in 2010 the union of india Uh, sought seven thousand crores more, which is ten times more than the settlement. Because four hundred and seventy million in nineteen eighty nine was about seven hundred five crores. But in two thousand ten, the very government which uh, settled the matter mm -hmm. in eighty nine challenged it, seeking more than ten thousand ten times the compensatory amount. Yeah. but although the the the, the matter was filed in 2010 and some preliminary hearings have taken place um <clears throat> the court has not dealt with the matter even after 10 years because they have to set up a constitution bench it is a five member bench to go, <clears throat> um he, hear the matter again so we are asking the court to expedite the matter hearing because because after 37 years every day more and more victims are dying you know without right. proper care uh, and more and more victims are so uh, uh, the curative petition does it go with the same number of victims as the uh, yeah, yeah because now it, the union of india accepts the fact that 573000 right. have died you know i mean uh, 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 injured 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 you know so while we support the curative petition mm -hmm. we we did not accept the figures of injured and dead with the uh, union of vendors initially yes so no even now you know we are, okay. we, are, we are contesting those we are not contesting the overall mm -hmm. magnitude of uh, injured it. we we say it will be about 5 like 74000 73000 but we are saying that the claim is more than 22000 uh, death claims were filed you know till 1996 and, and, and yeah after that in uh, i mean um, the state government did not permit anyone to file uh, death claims you know so registration of death claims after 1996 has not happened because all the more people have died because of the seriousness of the injuries they had suffered so this this matter so we are saying they should um, the government should um, allow victims to file re register death claims and also reexamine the basis for rejecting death claims right that should be done by uh, an independent uh, group of doctors they should examine the medical records on what what was the basis for rejecting death claims see uh, so that that has to be examined and also we are saying that if there are uh, as i pointed out more than 150000 people are regularly visiting hospital when all these people are permanently injured you know so so the category of seriousness of injuries should be 
again based on the medical records. That is that is one of the reasons why we are saying that I mean computerize all the medical records. Right. So uh, there would be enough evidence to point out the degree of injury suffered by these victims. And why why are victims again and again visiting hospitals? Even after 30, 37 Seven years, years yes. you know, people are still visiting hospitals seeking treatment. You know, by now there should have been proper categorization of the I mean uh, type of injuries the victims have suffered because the major injuries are in uh, uh, lung injuries, eyes, uh, nervous nerves <coughs> injuries suffered in the kidneys damages. So all these, there should be proper categorization of all the victims and based on the degree of injury, the compensation should be enhanced. And also re-examine all the death claims and quantify the actual number of dead and allow people to uh, register claims for deaths after 1996. Right. You know? Um, and, and you were just saying that every day the tragedy claims new victims. Uh, was yeah. this a reference to the people who are dying all those years after the exposure? Yeah, yeah. Or the continued leaching of the chemicals? No, that, that, that's a different matter in the sense, you know, <clears throat> uh, the, even before the uh, disaster, right. the, the factory was dumping toxic waste into what is called a solar evaporation pond. Right. And also burying waste within the factory premises. You know. right. So uh, these toxic chemicals have leached into the ground and contaminated soil and water. So we came to know this only as late as um, 1994. You know, that you know. Uh, the, the, the chemicals that has been contaminated with the ground water and so from then onwards we've been demanding that you know uh, you no know, how we came to know this was within the factory premises they have stored chemicals right. uh, you know whatever was left over you know um, uh, so that was stored in a uh, Shed, but because leaking roofs, etc., uh, uh, many of the uh, these chemicals which are kept in bags, etc., so uh, they have to repack them mm -hmm. and store it in a safer place within the factory premises. We got to know this information in 1994. Okay. Since then, we've been demanding. So then we knew that there's been serious problem of um, chemicals leaching into the ground and contaminating the soil and water. So Greenpeace conducted one study, and if you go, you know, so there have been three or four uh, studies, uh, <coughs> which proved that water uh, has been contaminated. And also, Neri has also conducted studies, right. you know, and Neri themselves have admitted the fact that more than one million tons of soil alone have been contaminated you know, in and around uh, the factory. So we said this is, I mean, uh, at least based on this evidence, uh, there should be a detailed study of the extent of contamination both within the factory and in the solar pond and also the degree of the extent of water because some of the aquifers also have been contaminated. So there should be proper study the extent of contamination and on the basis of that uh, uh, um, remediation measures should take place. In fact, uh, just uh, 15 days back I did talk to the minister, uh, uh, 
uh, and and he said that uh, he is willing to meet us sometime in the middle of November. The minister to, of uh, uh, gas relief uh, in Madhya Pradesh. In, in Madhya Pradesh, yeah. Which was, uh, which was Sarang. Right, so, right. So, so he's, he's agreed to meet us and uh, we'll discuss this matter with him. And what we, we, we are proposing is that um, this, at the initiative of the state government, uh, all the um, parties, you know, um, gas victims, uh, uh, experts in the field, uh, and chemical, chemical engineers and and others, and also we invite uh, representative uh, United Nations Environment Program uh, to just to study the magnitude of the problem and also to suggest remediation me measures. Right. Possible one of the thing is whether on-site remediation through closed-loop technologies, you know, whether it's possible and. Uh, <coughs> remediation, uh, uh, not to remediate soil and groundwater. So we are saying that at least the state government should take the initiative in calling a meeting of all the concerned parties. So hopefully uh, they may do something. So I, I hope to meet the minister again in the middle of November. Do you think uh, it uh, really matters a lot to the victims when the governments change, which government is in power, which government is not in power, to the kind of relief and remedial measures that are taken? No, unfortunately, um, uh, it does not matter at all because uh, whether it's in the state government or the center, the last 37 years, you know, uh, proper attention has never been given to the <clears throat> cause of the gas victims. In fact, an organization like the Indian Council of Medical Research this disbanded all research in 1994. I mean, it was just criminal neg negligence. Uh, they should never have done that. You know? And because of a pressure, they reopened research in 2004. You know? I mean, um, sorry, in, uh, at least 2010. You know, uh, uh, Okay. You know, after the uh, um, um, su Supreme Court's intervention. Right. You know, so there's been such a major gap, you know. You know, if, uh, uh, there was continuous research from uh, 84 to now. They would have got much more um, information on the kind of impact these toxic gases have all, not only on human beings, also on the environment. This aspect has been neglected, irrespective of which government was in power. You know, unfortunately, this this is uh, been neglected. This aspect has been neglected. Right. So, did did that make you wonder for a moment when the uh, Padma Award was, uh, you know, announced? Uh, that why is uh, the BJP government keen to remember someone whose uh, uh, cause they were not really uh, specially fighting for or adopting? No, I think they'll have to answer this question. Right? Why, uh, despite not taking enough interest regarding the cause of the gas victims, they decided to award somebody like Jabbar, who's been fighting for the victims for the last 35 years. Do you think the I award hope, can mean something? I hope, I hope it means that the government, even at this late stage, can still take interest in uh, take care of the gas victims. Let let them take the credit for it if they if they want to. Right. You know. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching News Click. Do subscribe and follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.